Welcome back to Card Casino Bratislava for day two of the Norwegian Championship. We apologize for the technical difficulties halfway through the last flight level, but we are back with a treat right now. You can see in seat number seven is 2022 WSOP Main Event Champion Espen Ullen Jorstad. And he has a little bit more than a starting stack, actually 50% more, and is up to 150,500 chips. Meanwhile, it's Anders Jorkheim with more than 500,000, who is the table captain at the new feature table. Hold. Blinds have gone up to 2,000, 4,000, along with the 4,000 big blind ante. And you can see that the field has been trimmed down to just 430 hopefuls. Hold. And straight into the action, we have Wig here with A7, another Espen at the table. So we could see some Espen on Espen crime at some point. But it is Espen Wig opening up to 9,000. Anders Hagen with the mystery hand and the small blind does fold. And maybe we will have Espen on Espen crime because I do expect to see Jorstad defend here or do something with his king four suited. I do not expect a fold. Does just peel off a 5k chip to call. And no love really for either player on this five of spades, eight of hearts, nine of hearts flop. However, Wig does have that open end there. Wig is still ahead with ace high. Happy to check it back. 10 of spades on the turn. Doesn't really change too much for Wig, although now a jack would complete a straight, but it wouldn't be the kind of straight that he would feel confident with. But perhaps he will bet after Espen checks it for a second time from out of position. And perhaps I shouldn't use Espen this hand, being that it is Espen versus Espen. But it is Espen Wig to bet. Expect your side to give up. Indeed, he does. The card in the box. And yeah. takes okay. down the pot. For those of you that are just tuning in and have missed the rest of the coverage, my name is Jason Glatzer. Many of you know me as a poker commentator, poker reporter. Some of you even know me as a poker player. Most of my live play is done locally in Lithuania these days. But I do once in a while travel on the road to play other cash games or play in a tournament. And I also play quite on quite a bit online as well. A couple of early position folds. see what Espen Wig does. He is sitting on nearly 100 big blinds, but does fold around to Hagen. Thor Hagen folds the button. Meanwhile, Espen waking up with an ace from the small blind. We know he's not folding. The question is, will he complete or will he raise? Curious what his Super Mario card protector has to say about this as well. And he will be raising to 14,000. And maybe taking down this pot preflop. Jorkheim can defend with the 6 5 offsuit if he so chooses. He would be playing in position against the world champ. Does have the biggest stack on the table. Anders Bjorkheim does indeed call. Not the prettiest flop for either player. Two ping, seven, two hearts on the flop. Nobody really with any direct draws. And Jorstad's ace high is still good. He checks it over to Bjorkheim, who as the chip leader may decide to put pressure despite bricking this flop with the 6-5 offsuit. He is looking at his chips. <coughs> <coughs> and will bet 12,000. Your 
just that calm, cool, and collected as ever. Makes a disciplined fold. And Bjorkheim steals one away using the power of his chip stack and position to win the pot. It would have been harder for him to do even in position if he didn't have all those chips. We walked around a little bit during the break and we did see a few other stacks above 500,000 including Tari Bremsit. We were unable to make it down to the bottom floor where there's a lot more tables. Unfortunately, we did witness uh, Brody Fagerle, the brains, the man, the myth, and the legend behind the Norwegian Championship on the rail. He didn't last too long on day two. He shouldn't be alone, though, with more than 100 players already hitting the rail on day two. We'll see your set play three hands in a row. This time he's opening the button with an ace. It's a bit weaker of an ace than he had last time, but it's an ace nonetheless and an unopened pot from the button. And Anders Bjorkheim holding his 10 7 suited. Let's see if Nertov decides to defend. Torkel taking it over and then quickly folds his cards. And your set picks up a nice little pop there, adds 10,000 to his stack. Again, it's the third hand in a row he's had an ace in his hand. Also, third hand in a row, the other card is a rag. But this time, with the a7 yeah. opening to 8,500 from the cutoff, that will likely get at least your time out of the way. And indeed, it does. I don't see Nerta playing his seven deuce. Quickly folds. But that's different for Hagen here. Ola Hagen will likely be playing his fives. It's a question of whether he's going to call a race. <laughs> Does call bring the pot up to 23,000? And a 7 out of the window, but the other two cards are a bit higher than that. So your set flopping top pair on the Queen Jack 7 2 heart flop. But it's Hagen that's first to act, who checks. We would expect your set to continue on a whole variety of flops. Let's see how he approaches it with bottom pair. There's out a small bet of 5,000. Hagen may even pull to the small bet, being that all three cards are above his five. Decides to peel it off to see the sixth diamond turn, and now there's two diamonds and two hearts on the board. Hagen checking once again. And Norstad checking back. And the nine of hearts completing the board of the river, so that's kind of a dangerous card for Norstad. Completes some flush, and let's see if uh, Hagen tries to rep that he had that flush, or the King Ten with the open-ended straight draw could have also been calling, but does opt to check. Your set making the easy check back and wins the hand with a pair of sevens to his opponent's 
pocket five. <laughs> Although we've seen Espen active, he has had an ace during the last three hands. About, uh, um, and as I was, uh, and all three times it made that. sense uh, to play as well. Here's an updated so look at the chip counts. You can see Anders with 560,000, Espen Wig with nearly 400,000, and the rest of the players are between a starting stack and 233,500 Finally, a hand Espen can't play, the 9-4 offsuit. But Bjorkheim with an ace this time from the cutoff. Looks like a min-raise, and indeed it is. Nertov folds. Hagen will likely fold. This is offsuit, he's in the small blind. Brynlund may defend, but his 8 is dominated, so if it's one of these 8 high flops, we could be seeing some danger zone for Brantlin. But does lay it down, possibly keeping himself out of trouble by doing so. And Bjorkheim should be happy, even though he had the best hand, ace 8 is not typically a hand that flops super well to take down the pot without any resistance and without even needing to see a flop. We're currently on level 11 and the day will end at the conclusion of level 16, so about six more hours of play along with a few breaks with one hour blind levels. around to Hagen who opts to min raise the button with 7 6. So, not the two biggest hands in the world with Espen Wig here defending with a 6 3 off. And a 7 out of the window, but similar to Espen's hand. Espen, your stance previous hand with the a7. There is a queen and a jack followed. But this will likely get the job done with Wig not connecting with any of the board. And will be folding to a bet of 6,000 after checking the action over to Hagen. And Hagen now has double a starting stack and a sitting at 219,000 in chips. was able to have a quick chat with Espen, Gorstad, who I've known for many, many years before the start of this feature table. He's looking to have some fun, but he really wants to win this championship. It's more of a pride thing for Espen Gorstad, though. After winning 10 million last summer, and the WSOP main event. Oh. 
floats around the brand line on the button. The min races with uh, pretty enough hand, King 10 off. Certainly open a ball from some other late position spots, even middle position in an unopened pot. Weak calling with the suited Thanks. connectors. But Eibach, three betting to 26,000 with his ace four suited. This may get the job done. I don't think Brandlin is going to four bet. If he does opt to call, he will be playing in position. But folds as expected. And Espenwig also folds. So well played there by Eidbach. Adding 16,000 chips to his hand, to his pot, to his stack. Bumble, bumble, trouble. Espen Wig he will be opening his A7 from the button. Let's see the sizing. Up to 9,000. Eidbach with nothing to speak of is holding from the small blind. And Hagen has a hand that is pretty enough to defend. Pretty enough to 3 bet if he really wanted to. The call is a safer option and he does call. And Hagen, flopping top pair on the Jack-5 deuce flop. There are two clubs in the flop, giving Wig a backdoor flush draw. And Hagen checks his top pair. Wig continuing for 12,000. Don't expect Hagen to go anywhere. This may be a check raise. It does look like a check raise. Raising it to 30,000. That will get the job done, most likely. Indeed it does. Hagen not wanting to see any more cards. Happy to take it down right here, right now, with the top pair. Lots of cards where you'd have to think twice on a turn and river. On the other hand, he wasn't able to get more value out of his hand, so it depends on which way you're looking at that. But I do like the check raise. seeing Bjorkheim's other card. He will likely be folding from under the gun. And he does. Meritoff follows suit, as does Hagen. Let's see what Brandwein does, though. So does fold. Wig and Eidbach wasting no time. And back to Hagen in the small blind this time with a premium hand especially from the blinds, but he will be playing potentially out of position against Espen Jorstad, who also wakes up for with an ace. Hagen racing it to 10,000. Jorstad happy to call, not realizing <laughs> how far behind he is. And now he's even further behind, but this should be an easy hand for Espen Jorstad to get away from, unless Hagen is sneaky and checks it. But I think if he's going to be betting flops, he misses. He should be betting flops, he hits. This one he hit fairly hard with top pair. Doesn't have any hearts or backdoor with the spades. But it doesn't really matter. And 
takes a pot off of your stack. Every single of these 904 players are Norwegian. Norwegian is certainly allowed at the table. While some of the dealers do come from Norway, many do not, but all the Norwegians know English as well. The table talk is allowed in Norwegian. So I back opening with this A7 from the cutoff for a min raise. You're said thinking about what to do from the small blind. But having a conversation as well at the same time. Does opt to call. Who would be a fairly loose defend from Bjorkheim and he opts not to put more chips into the pot with his nine Ds from the big line. So I back in position against your stat leading up to the ten. Jack six, two diamond flop. Your stat flopping top pair checks it over to Eidbach, who may continue. Perhaps saves himself a little bit of trouble by checking it back. Your stat will still with top pair on the four of spades turn. But there are two suits on the board, two diamonds and two spades. I would expect at this point for your set to try to get some value and or protect this hand. That's big, 36,000 into a pot of 24,000. It's not just more than the pot, it's 50% more than the pot at the time. I don't see how Eidbach can do anything <laughs> but hold here. And Jorstad takes down the pot. Loving watching Espen, I do miss a couple of the players that were at the other table. We did have Chris Jonasson playing uh, very interestingly and building his stack in the process. Meanwhile, we had a third Espen, Espen Kolstad with Olympic strategy, which is also interesting to watch unfold. We heard he did double up while we were having some technical difficulties. And Espen Wig waking up with the aces. Let's see what his sizing is. Opening to 9,000. Let's see if Wig gets any action. Hagen folding his jack 10. So far, it looks like Wig might get a walk, but Ertoff maybe will defend here. This is defendable, but Ertoff is below his starting stack. And from a results oriented point of view, wisely makes the fold. Meanwhile, Wig might be disappointed he didn't get any callers with his aces. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to expect Wick to do the same. Indeed he does. So we're seeing a lot more conventional poker than what we saw during the first two blind levels with a different table. And your stud will be opening his ace jack suited from the cutoff. He'd likely be opening this from any position in an unopened pot for sure. Opens for 8,500. Eritoff holding the weaker ace from the small blind and let's see if Hagen can defend. It is suited even though it's just 9-4. Decides not to face off against a world champion with 9-4 and who can blame him? And your set picking up another small pot is up to 165,000 in chips. <laughs> with the ace jack. It is against an under the gun open, but Bjorkheim also has a big stack. Decides not to play it this time, facing an under the gun open. No problem even in position. Let's see, flop top pair, you don't know if you're standing good with an under the gun player very often having stronger aces like ace king, ace queen. And then I'm thinking about doing something here from the big line. Perhaps he will defend. And perhaps he will fold. So Espen Wig picking up the blinds in the ante. Jason Glatzer. I've been here all week and I'll still be here for another three days after this one. I had fun commentating some high stakes cash games earlier this week. I had fun commentating the heads up. And also yesterday they were doing the main event. Magnus Carlsen was on that table all day. And that was an absolute treat to watch, especially near the end where there was a lot of mayhem breaking loose. You should check out that video on the Poker NM channels on YouTube. But meanwhile, Hagen opening to 9,000 from early position with Jack 10 suited. Bjorkheim calling from the hijack. With his pocket sevens. Eritov would like to wake up with the hand, not wake up with seven deuce and does quickly fold. But meanwhile, Brandland waking up with Big Slick. We could see some more chips coming in. I would not expect to see a call here. I would expect a squeeze of some sort. Look like he's making a squeeze. The 26,000. Wig will have to get out of the way with his queen nine. No longer facing just a single bet. Now we'll be curious what Hagen and Bjorkheim opt to do. Grantland, if anybody calls, will be playing his hands out of position. But Hagen gets out of the way. 
perhaps Bjorkheim is thinking about whether he can set minus sevens, but keep in mind he's also in position, so if you call, you're not necessarily just set lining, you're playing your position as well. It does indeed call. I see a look at the or ahead for the 3 3 4 flop. Brandman, who three bet the pot three with his big swing for his first set back. If he had a bet up here than sevens, he would be betting. I wouldn't mind to see him play against this king, which often has value on such a low board. But he does check. Det er kanskje mer som i Mexico, får du jo temperaturen og alt sånn opp til inn der, kan du kose deg litt med litt. Ja, jeg tipper det er nice til å være i Mexico egentlig. Ja, ja. Det er sånn at your time to figure out that he's ahead, decides to check it back, and now it's gonna be harder for him to realize that. And Brandland has a net flush draw. Your time has a flush draw with a 7 as well, but not as good. Your time still is still ahead with the sevens. <laughs> Perhaps that jack is a scare card for him as well. And Brandland betting out for thirty-two thousand five hundred. Decisions with an hour clock He's at the feature table with a lights and camera. It's always good to take your time and not regret your play. You can always regret it from a results oriented point of view, but not regret it from a theoretical point of view, which isn't important the theoretical view from the short term, but it is important long term. That's why when people tell me bad beats, I tell them don't sweat it. Did you play the hand correctly? That's what's important. Brandland improves after connecting him with his ace on that ace of diamond river. He bet the turn and got a call. He shouldn't be playing the pun on too many threes. He might be thinking about whether his opponent got anything else. Obviously, if it's opponent had pocket fours or pocket jacks, they could have been slow playing it in this spot, but that is not as common. It would be more common for his opponent to have a hand like he has, or some kind of jack-x combination, or perhaps a flush draw that isn't to the ace, because Brandman has that block. <laughs> of course, his opponent can also have a flush. We see that he doesn't. But Brandland did bet. I didn't catch the sizing. So hopefully that pops up soon in the graphics. And will Bjorkheim attempt a bluff catch? It would be unsuccessful if he did. He was ahead when he called the turn. Nice. Will he realize now that he's behind? Yeah. It does, yeah. it yeah. does yeah. get rid of his hand that Brandland yeah. takes down the pot with his yeah. ace-king. He went to mind it a call at all if he knows his opponent was calling as light as sevens, but not this time. should catch up momentarily. In the meantime, I'll try to see if we can follow the action as it's unfolding on the table. 
And here we go. It is catching up as we speak. Bjorkheim opening up with the Queen Jack suited from middle position. And Eidbach, whose Jack 8 is dominated without him realizing a defense, a big mind. But does flop the top pair on the 6 7 8 flop? Checks it over to Bjorkheim. Let's see if he checks it back or tries to rep something. This is a better flop for the big lines calling range than typically a middle position opener. Your time will find out where he's at with a bet of 8,000. I thought will likely just call and he may opt to raise. Does call with his top pair. And oh my, Bjorkheim now with the top pair after the Queen of Clubs comes on the turn. If we see a river and it's a jack, that could spell trouble for Eidbach. But that's a lot of what ifs. Eidbach does check again. Expect Bjorkheim to bet after betting that flop. It is a draw heavy board. On the other hand, there is some pot control involved here too. Does check it over. And both players see the ace of heart river. Bjorkheim's queens are good at the moment. I'd back checks again. I would expect your time to check it back as well. If he checked the turn, but maybe now he's going to try for a little bit more value. If it was a card like a deuce, I would expect that more often. But he's going to try for some value, and this may work. That's 15,000 into a pot of 38,000. Eidbach turns his hand into a bluff that might work as well. And that's awfully hard to do when you have shadow value. And he may be thinking, can I get your time off aces if I raise? However, the story didn't make sense if Eidbach bought the straight to be checking the river after the turn was checked back and does make the correct fold well played by Bjorkheim well played actually there by both players Set is a very self-aware player, so he does understand his celebrity status, but that hasn't stopped him from being as humble as he always has been. Happy to talk with anybody at the table. And when he's not playing, he didn't forget his old friends, such as myself, happy to always have a conversation with me as well, and other people that he has gotten to know over the years. Your set min raising from under the gun with ace nine. If their talk was a bit deeper, he would maybe call, but this time around he will be folding from early middle position. Hagen folding queen ten from the hijack. But we may see Brand Land do something here with this ten nine suited from the cutoff. Your set was under the gun. He is going to at least call. Wig folding the button with his king deuce. I'd back folding as well from the small blind. And even if you defend wide, this might be a hand you don't want to defend. Hagen agrees. So your set probably didn't want to see the six queen jack flop. Meanwhile, Brandland has that open-ended straight draw, but it's the baby end of it. So a card like an offsuit 
eights, like anything that isn't a heart would be the perfect card for Brainland on the turn. A card like the king, he should still feel fairly comfortable, but he is behind, obviously, that ace 10. We see that your side does not have that there. But it's able to take it away here. It doesn't need to see a turn or a river. Gets Espen off the better hand. Well played by Andreas Brandland. Here's a quick look at the chip counts once again. Nobody on their 23 big blinds. Meanwhile, that art med the hand of the poor girl was a gravitier man. It's a naturally moot that the board had me blunt on spare and mockery or bergen esse or flare that for the first go stemming that are for under the answer among a chipsy spin that are there. Man naturally finner sin plus men. I was neither for a foreign uploading Magnus Carlsen. Han blev dessverre slått ut. Han satt jo her borte i sted, men det er slik at han hadde en S-konge, unnskyld, en S-dame i en all-in preflop mot S-konge etter at han hadde blitt litt short. Og det betyr at han må dessverre takke for seg å ikke ta med seg noen NM-titel i år. Han har vel å merke ganske mange av de fra før i sjakken. Men en som har NM-titel i poker, og har den ganske nylig, han sitter rett bak meg her. Han er ikke hånd nå, ser det ut som. Indresøn, du ser ut som du er godt gående og lever fint. Ja, det er jo greit. Jeg begynner å bli utsjort, men jeg har spillet greit. Hvordan føles det å forsvare en titel? Nei, jeg får jo litt ekstra spenning og litt ekstra motstand, men det føles godt. Det er det. Og hvis jeg gjetter her, så ser det ut som du sitter på rundt 150, stemmer det? Ja, 150-160. 50 mer enn du startet med, da? Hæ? Det er 50 mer enn du startet med? Ja, det er jo det. Det er jo det, så det går oppover. Lykke til. Jo, takk skal du ha. Så som dere ser, det er profiler overalt her, og hvis man går fra bord til bord og egentlig bare ser rundt seg, så kan jeg i hvert fall garantere at det er flust med gode pokerspillere igjen, og det har en tendens til å samles når man kommer litt lenger ut i disse turneringene. Thank you to the amazing Svede for bringing us some of the action on the bottom floor of the main event. And you can see the field is below 400 entries at this point in time. With more players hitting the rail. We'll continue to see that number get lower and lower, not only throughout today, as we're only on day two, but throughout day three, day four, and then on the final table on the final day as well. Such a deep stacked affair. Players starting with 100,000 chips, blinds going up every hour. And although late registration was closed at the start of the day, in theory, if a player was allowed to late enter now, it would still be a healthy 25 big blind stack. One of the best structured events especially for just an 800 euro buy-in that you'll find anywhere in Europe and perhaps anywhere in the world is a Norwegian championship. And on top of that, the main event is a freeze-out affair, meaning we see that the field attracted a total of 940, 904 players, and those are all individual players, and they're all individual Norwegian players. And it's not just at the feature table, you can walk around anywhere in the poker room and all the tables are like this at in between hands. Players are chatting away, catching up with each other, telling stories. And Nertov, who got back above a starting stack, is looking to add a bit more with his ace queen from under the gun, will be opening. It looks like a main raise. It's a little bit more to 9,000. But Hagen waking up at the big slick, having that ace queen dominated, likely to three bet this hand. Three bets it to 28,000. 
seven and a half big blinds. Sorry, the six and a half big blinds. Once again, sorry, again, it's the seven big blinds. And near top. May be able to get away from it. Right, because Hagen raised from one seat over would be different from a later position raise. Hagen has a lot of players after him. And does get away from his ace queen. Meanwhile, Hagen picks up some chips without seeing a flop. set ups to do with his suited connectors from the button. It doesn't look like he's ready to fold. He'll just be calling, no three betting happening from your set. And Nertov, perhaps this is a good spot for him to be three betting, maybe even three betting large. It's also okay for him to just call. Grandland often turns up with higher pairs than eights. And plays it safe with just a call. And there's 30,000 in the pot with three players ready to see a flop. Four, five, six with two spades. Nobody really with any back doors other than Nertov, but Nertov is still ahead with his eights. Checks it out of position. bet to 11,000 by Brandland. Gets your set out of the way. There it's off. Thinking through a lot of things, and I do like this race. I would have liked to see it a little bit bigger, but perhaps he feels that if now he's raised over the top, he can get away from his eights. Because Brandwein could have bigger pocket pairs from him. Remember, Brandwein did open from early position. Which means all the nines plus are in his range, aren't necessarily in your sets. And does get Brandwein to pull it. Doesn't need to see a turn in the river, and Nertov able to chip up. Although he had the best hand right there, that could have been a dangerous turn or river for him. So great play there by Nertov. Det er 
first walk and Hagen only with the 5-4 if he looked down at his cards he'll be happy to see that walk raise to 9,000 and now Espen Jorset also with the suited ace. Uh, looks like a three bet. Uh, it is a three bet to 27,000 from the hijack. If nobody else wakes up with anything, that may be good enough to take down the pot. And I doubt Hagen wants to play ace knight suited out of position against the world champion. But it doesn't look like any of the other players have anything playable. Let's see what Hagen decides to do here. Or Hagen does give up on the hand, and your stat with the a6 suited is able to take down the pop preflop despite his a6 being dominated by a9. The power of aggression and the power of position getting the job done. from under the gun to 8,000, it's a min raise. Hagen deciding not to play his ace five suited. Let's see what Espen will do with his ace four suited from under the gun plus two. We did see him just three bet ace six suited, which were also happened to be hearts. But that was from a different spot. Ace four suited is going into the muck. folds and I expect Hagen to follow. Ola Hagen also folding. Andreas Brandland folding and let's see if Espen wake up He quickly folds. I back picking up some chips with that min raise from under the gun. But is now in the big blind himself. So some of those chips are going right back into the pot. Det är ju en live turné. 
have another few hands at this blind huddle where we will be witnessing a 5,000 big blind. Blinds do go up slowly every hour and they do not skip any blind levels as well. So very often at other events you'll see it going from 2,000, 4,000 straight up to 3,000, 6,000. That's not the case here at the Norwegian Championship main event. Completing from the small blind with 10-7, Ibach opting not to put more money in the pot in position from the big blind with its king six suited, but then nails two pair on the king 8-8-8 pot. Quick to check, so let's see if Ibach will bet. He also has a backdoor flush draw. I don't foresee Wig doing any fancy play syndrome here. Will likely fold based on what we've seen from this far. And Eidbach able to uh, win a pop from the big line. Just a limp one now. But back to back small pots for Eidbach. Here's a look at the updated chip counts. Once again, nobody short. We do have a little bit of deep stack poker impact with some players having a lot of chips. And a little more than a third of the field remaining. I imagine a lot of the eliminated players are gonna hop into the two day Thor Hansen Memorial. Hansen, a Norwegian legend that unfortunately is no longer with us. Rest in peace to Thor. Jorstad min racing from under the gun. Curious what is under the gun ranges. This is probably near the bottom of it with King 8 suited. Is it the fact that it's under the gun scare off Hagen? It doesn't look like it is. It does just call though. Maybe it allow Wig to come in from the button. Whereas a three bet would not have. Wig does indeed call an eye back, waking up with the ace queen. Will we see a squeeze here? It's a very difficult squeeze with once again your stat being the under the gun opener, but I'd back thinking otherwise. Three pets at the 31,000. Do like the sizing quite a lot. Gets taken to fold that King 10. Whereas if I'd back just called, Hagen would have uh, stayed in the action. Your stat immediately getting out of the way. Asking for bet sizing, and now is thinking now that he sees that it's 31,000. A four bet would look a little bit fishy in this spot, so I think it's going to be either a call or a fold. If he calls, perhaps Wig will call as well. It looked like he was reaching chips to uh, do something, but it's to shuffle them. It does help some players think. You can see Eidbach shuffling his cards, uh, his chips as well. So it does fold, and now Wig also folds and. Uh, Although Eidbach did have the best hand there, he would have played it out of position. 
against at least three players from F4. So instead of having to sweat, Ward is able to pick up some chips now. And blinds have just gone up to 2,500, 5,000 with a big blind to ante of 5,000. to the button already. Eidbach opting to raise the button with his 7-6 suited for a min raise. Remember the blinds did go up to 2,500, 5,000. Hagen, three betting to 35,000 with this ace jack from the small blind and gets both the big blind and button to fold to pick up the pot. like he completed the blinds with the 6-5 and Bjorkheim let's see if he has some fancy play syndrome with the three Gs. it doesn't seem like that kind of table does check it back so there's six high between the two players but both players grabbing a piece of this jack 6-3 flop Bjorkheim with bottom pair Mes Espen Jorstad with middle pair that betting 5,000. Let's see if your time will continue facing that min bet with the bottom pair. Raising it up to 15,000, repping more than just that three deuce. Or at least hoping that your set didn't connect and trying to uh, take the pot now. Let's see if your side can sniff out this raise. At least for now, he's going to see a turn. We know your side's ahead, but your side's probably uncertain at this point in time. And now your side checking again with the nine of spades, not connecting with either player. It's a rare circumstance where we see six five facing off against Trey Deuce, both players with offsuit cards on top of that. Is Bjorkheim going to try to keep up with his story? I think another bet on the turn will work. However, he decides to slow down and the seven of diamonds on the river. Perhaps 
you are set. Will bet trying to get better sixes, but I don't think so. Getting better sixes to fold, or in this case, as we see, Bjorkham has bottom paired to get some of those other hands to call for value. That would be so thin value. But your set checks. Let's see what Bjorkheim decides to do. Checks it back, and the world champion wins the pot. Made the correct call after being raised up on the flop. Went check, 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 check on the turn and river. So easy game for your set. And up to 165,000 chips. It's an absolute honor and pleasure to be commentating the Norwegian Championship here at Card Casino Bratislava. We are on day two, for those of you just tuning in. You can see on the graphic below, we're on level 12 currently, and the players will keep competing today until the conclusion of level 16. So after this blind level, there will be a break, and then four more hours of play. There is a break after every two blind levels, so there'll be one more break after the next one as well. We just began level 12, so at least for now, we'll be with you for about another 50 minutes before we stretch our legs, get some coffee, talk to some of the players, depending on how long the break is. But your set getting away with one this time with the king eight. And slowly but surely building up his stack. This event is a marathon and not a sprint. If you're slowly accumulating chips, that is more than alright in this kind of marathon. Hello. Hello. There may be some tables with alternate stack players, but this table, everybody has above a starting stack. Even Nertoff, who has the shortest stack, still has 22 big lines. around the Hagen with the A7 from the hijack. He's putting his cards in the box. That's usually a sign that at least he's going to think things over, but now he's looking at his chips, which is usually a sign he will also be betting. And it should come as no surprise. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it looks like he accidentally limped. It happens. Players sometimes forget when they throw out one chip, it's just a call. And Espen raising it up with the king queen from the cutoff. And if Hagen calls, it'll be your stat in position, assuming nothing happens in the blinds. Neratov quickly folds his queen nine. I expect Hagen to have too big of a price to pay with his ace deuce. We can see he'd be wise to hold it based on what the other two players have. But the limp did look unintentional by Hagen. Perhaps saving him some chips if Espen was willing to 3-bet there. If Hagen did open, your set is uh, happy enough to show his big queen. <laughs> it shows you even though they're competing for a lot of money, <laughs> that it is a fun game. <laughs> the Norwegians have a very good poker community, very supportive of each other. <laughs> Typically.
typically in events, I don't think it's a good idea to give your opponents free information unless you're trying to get into their head about something. I sometimes fall in the trap myself where I'm just trying to be nice and might show. I'll sometimes show if I ran a big bluff. But then that is to uh, use to my advantage later. Meanwhile, Hagen opening up to 11,000. but because each other are blocking the hearts, the chances of that are now reduced that there will be hearts, but it happy enough to call it his 9-7 suited nonetheless. And this is a very interesting flop here. Hagen flopping middle pair, but Hagen with the better end of that open-ended straight draw with the two over cards and is reaching for chips. Betting 10,000 into a pot of 29,500, so about one third of the pot. Andreas Bradlin does just call. And this may slow down the action. It may not, but the Ace of Diamonds is not a card either player should be that happy about. But the Eight of Hearts on the river completes the straight for Hagen. Will he be able to extract any more chips from the stack of Andreas Brantlein? Thor Hagen appears to be a very aware player as well. 16. And it looks like Brantlein is trying to just set the price and Hagen can and should be raising with the nuts here. This is either to get into his opponent's head with the pause or really just thinking about the size he wants to raise. It could go either way there. Raising it up to 40,000. So it's another 24 or so for Brad Land to call. How much does he value his third pair? There are a lot of hands he's behind. On the other hand, it is a good board to be doing that with. And perhaps the check check on the turn is getting into Bradline's hand. But he's running through the hand, it seems, in his head. Let's see if he comes with the correct decision. He will be making the call. Hagen gets paid. Well played by Thor Hagen. Perhaps if you were going to call a raise by Hagen, you should maybe be checking. Unless he was trying to get value from something there. It didn't seem like though there were too many bluffs on that board though. Maybe a king queen. say nice hand as a gentleman to Hagen as the dealer was shuffling the deck for this hand. This one up for 10,500, so a little bit more than a min bet. But Bradland, who just uh, lost a bit on that last pot, does have a very pretty ace queen suited. to 26,000. 
I don't expect Nertov to do anything even though he would be in position. I don't expect a call. I don't expect a four bet. It's not that Bradland has been getting out of line at all. Where a four we should expect a four bet to work. And to just call seems very spewy. He comes up with the same conclusion. And both players involved with that pot have had a little laugh about something. <laughs> Six on the mystery card. And if the six was enough to know he should be folding that under the gun unless the other card was also a six. Your time though, it's a different story with the ace queen. Isman raising it from middle position. So far, nobody else has a hand they want to play, or should play for that matter. Putting Brandland on the button. A Dora Brunson esque hand by Wig. Even though it's being streamed, there's no point in playing that. But Eidbach will defend his 9 8 offsuit. And top pair for Bjorkheim. Eidbach does have a gut shot to the straight. The problem with that 10 comes if he doesn't put his opponent on a hand like ace-queen and puts him on a hand like ace-king, that would be an even better straight. But we see none of that really matters. A 10 would be good for him. Expect him to fold after Bjorkheim bets, and Bjorkheim reaching for some chips. He bets a little more than half the pot. Even a smaller bet would have gotten the job done. Well played, though, nonetheless. There were two clubs in that board. The queen and jack are connected. You do want to put more chips in that spot. Don't want to slow, slow play your top pair. There are some players that would have slow played that top pair and then it becomes tricky. It gets in the hot head of the opponent. How can you have a queen and check? There is some rationale to checking, but I do like to bet much better than checking it back and giving your opponent a free card to look at. Meanwhile, Neratov has ace-jack suited. He did have to fold ace-queen earlier to a three bet, and it was a correct one. He was facing ace-king. Although, who knows, maybe he would have gone there. We never saw a flop turn a river. Does raise this up to 10,500. Let's see what Ibach does with his ace Wisely tosses it away, and Hagen, I think, will do the same. Even players that defend a super wide range will be holding that. There are some players that do call 100% of the time. to fold those eight threes even if you connect with the board you really don't know where you stand very often and you can get in trouble. However, if it was going to be like two threes in the flop then you know that you're likely very good. And ace jack for a different player this time it's more time and it's offsuit. Min races from under the gun. Okay, let's go. Thinking about tequila shots. A little bit earlier for that, but it is a Norwegian championship, so if we see some tequila being brought out that they're talking about now, but it could have been a story from another night. This time it was Bjork's time turn to get a walk with the ace jack. Last ace jack did not get a walk, but we've seen a lot of.
whole thing going on facing a single bet. And it was a walk to the ace hand. There was an ace queen in hand before that there was no walk. So back to back walks for players with ace jacks. And typically when you say walk, it's everybody holding to the big blind. But I, I like to use it for like a single bet and everybody holding. There's no problem. I'm going to back to the pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that looks like a three bet indeed it is. Indeed. Let's see what the cards are. Then we have an Eidbach with the big slick three betting to 28,000. This will likely get all the way through. We do not see the hands <coughs> of the players in the blinds, and indeed it does, as the dealer is shuffling up for the next hand. It's a 
King, four, five, rainbow top. York climb still ahead. safely down by the box. Opens to a little more than a min range for 11,000. So far so good for Wig. Nobody with anything. That all changes here with Nertov though, but he is facing under the gun open. But he needs to get something going. Maybe this is the time with the ace jack on the button. Uh, decides to keep playing tight poker, pulls the ace jack. Hagen will be folding the 10th board from what we've seen of him. And Wig winning the blinds and the anties. Gotta be happy about that. the 2022 WSOP main event champion. High back opening undergun this time and with a slightly better hand than fives, although equity wise it's maybe not that it typically is just because uh, it connects with boards a lot better than fives does. If it was like an all in and call situation, the fives would be slightly ahead, but that's not how we're looking at this. Standard open from under the gun. And Wick, with the weaker ace, is going to do something from the big blind. Does just call. <coughs> and I'd back improves the top pair on the queen 3 5 rainbow flop. Wick with nothing really at all. Shows he has no equity to win the pot, which must mean that there were nines in other players' hands. That's the theory of running nines. Does have a non zero percent chance of happening. But never mind that, we won't see if that ever takes place because I bought bets. I can't see Wick reverse footing with this ace nine. And does indeed fold. Solid poker by everybody at the table. Yeah, I haven't seen huh? any fancy play syndrome. 
Potentially seeing a white three better too, and that's about it. Again, that's fairly standard. Yeah, and no one's poking about that. First act from middle position with the ace queen suited. And Nertov, who folded ace jack to an under the gun open a short while ago when he was on the button, now has ace 10 from the hijack, folds that as well. His stack is getting uh, shorter and shorter, but you can be patient with one hour blind levels. No blind levels being skipped, so why not wait for your spot? At least I think that's how Nertov is thinking has the short stack at the table. And when calling both his cards alive with the King Jack offsuit. We'll be playing in position if the blinds don't change anything and the players in the blinds will fold. So it'll be heads up to the pop. No love for either player on this nine deuce seven rainbow. who was the pre-flop addresser, his first to act out of position. He will be continuing despite not hitting the board. And there's a good chance that this bet will work. It was, I believe, for 12,000. And here's the graphic confirming it. And meanwhile, Brantland will likely get out of the way based on what we've seen. And he does. I would say the action at this table is far more predictable with us seeing everybody's cards than it was at the first feature table to start the day. It seems like this far at least no player is taking any unnecessary big risks. Meanwhile, players at the outer tables are going out left and right. You can see there's just 337 <laughs> players remaining out of the field of 904. And while we don't know who the champion will be in three days' time, we can tell you he will definitely be Norwegian, or at least have a Norwegian ID, because this is a Norwegian-only event. Pure freeze out with 904 players putting up an 800 euro buy in. Some of these players likely won a satellite. Certainly not as been your step. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Steals one away. Well played there by Wig, using his position, using the fact that he opened up to take the pot away from a better hand. up soon, but it looks like Thor Hagen called whatever bet that was. And here we go. Thor Hagen on the button with the Queen A calling a min raise by Eidbach and your set from the small blind deciding what to do with his Jack Queen offsuit does also call long. Will your client feel compelled to do the same with his 9-6 and does from the big blind. So already 40,000 in the pot, 45,000 in the pot. Nobody with an ace in their hand. Let's see if Eidbach, though, continues. It is harder to do so when you're four way. Maybe, maybe Hagen will try to steal this one away. You don't necessarily play hands like this on the button. <coughs> Just play your cards. You're playing your position as well. Goes off the check. And now pulls ahead after connecting with that eight of diamonds turn. Your stat now has a double gut shot straight draw though. And if he is to bet that, even Hagen should take pause at that point in time. It is pretty strong when you're calling from the small blind. There's a lot of aces in its range. You could think a 10 is good. In this case, it would be a double gutter along with some other potential outs without him realizing it. Against Hagen, it would really only be the jack because the queen would give Hagen two pair. But this is all very speculative. If Espen isn't going to bet, but Espen is betting his double gutter, and it's a big bet of 30,000 into a pot of 45 that will get Eidbach to fold. And it should be enough to take down the pot as well. I don't see either player wanting to put more chips in at this point in time. Eidbach folds. But Hagen, who has the best hand, is thinking it over. It's just hard for him to think he has the best hand. But 
where we smart bet here by Espen. It folds, and Espen does not need to see a river to win this hand. He would be drawing to eight outs against some players. Or at least probably in his head, eight outs, but some of his other cards revive too, particularly the jack. So well played by the 2022 WSOP main event champ, who continues to pick up shifts here on day two at the feature <coughs> table. to 11,000 was ace five suited. We've seen other players at the table hold these hands from under the gun, but we've seen others also raise. This is a hand in late position or even from the smaller big blind. I do like to free bet from under the gun. Now I'm happy to hold myself, but maybe I am too tight. Wake three betting to 30,000 from middle position with the beautiful ladies. If he didn't three bet, or let's say Hagen didn't open, Hagen didn't open, then Hagen could get involved with the sixes, but certainly not with the three bet to thirty. Folds all the way around to Hagen. Now some solvers in some spots say an ace five suited is a four bet. I don't think this would be one of the spots with an under the gun against an under the gun plus two, but I could be wrong. I don't run solvers myself. Do not have the time. Do you try to talk some advanced strategy though with uh, my vast network of players? And it wasn't a three, but it was a call out of position with the ace five suited. So this is the first unorthodox hand that we've seen in quite some time. But Hagen gets there on the king, ace, king flop. problem with this kind of flop, if you're just calling with ace five, you have no idea where you stand. It could work out well for Hagen now. Kind of an unfortunate spot for Wick, his three bet in many instances would have gone through, and in many instances Hagen, a player wouldn't have opened even this hand from under the gun. Obviously it wasn't the best flop against any of the other players. Let's say Hagen you didn't open, Wig would have opened, the player with the sixes would have called, but the queen is still being miles out of the sixes, but the sixes would have been in position. But it looks like a dunk bet coming by Hagen. So he calls a three bet, then he's going to lead the flop after connecting with his ace. It looked like maybe that's not the case, he's just counting his chips. There would be little, very little point in dunk betting here. No, he did check, he was counting because Wake did bet to 35,000. The graphics just took a little time to update. This does actually at least make for an interesting hand. Not seem too happy about it, but does call. He is miles ahead, but may not feel that way. Two of spades falls on the turn. There's already 142,500 in the pot. So while I said I didn't like the call of the three bet, the open was fine, even if I don't always do it. I think you either four bet or you fold, and in this case, a four bet would have been costly because he would have had to fold to a potential 5-bet, although if Wig just called the 4-bet and he flops this, then it actually becomes an even more bloated pot. But these are lots of what-ifs on top of what-ifs, and we need to get back to the reality of the situation. And Hagen checking his ace. And 
Wake checking back. Potentially realizing that not only is he beat, that he's against a sticky player at this point. Especially one that just has less than one pot size bet behind. Wake is blocking that Queen Jack. That, that's not the hand that is the most scary here. There's a lot of big slicks and Hagen's range. That kind of hand is a four better call more often than the ace five suited. From out of position anyway. Is Wake gonna try to steal this one away? Does not. <coughs> and Hagen picks up a big pot here. Not exactly how I would have played it, but it worked out well for Hagen. So who am I to judge at all? Well played there by Hagen to uh, somehow get ahead of the Queens and take down a sizable 142,500 chip pot. around the Bjorkheim on the button with the ace nine offsuit. Opens up for a min raise. Neratov has been fairly tight in general, so the 5-2 suited is probably not going to be his spot to try to get some chips back. Hagen though, however, will likely be doing something with his 9-7 suited. Does just make the call after winning a big pot with his ace five suited. And flops two pair. It is all heart sale. Bjorkheim with the nut flush draw and middle pair. Hagen does check it over, which is the usual play from the blinds after defending. And Bjorkheim would be continuing on a lot of boards and he will be continuing on this one with the nut flush draw. It's a bet of 9,000 into 27.5. Looks like Hagen will just fall with his two pair on a scary board, even with two pair. That is not one of the scary cards. Four of spades on the turn. Hagen checking again. Will Bjorkheim check back, or does he think his ace nine is good? Does he want to check to see if a heart comes on the river? There's a lot of different options here does indeed check it back though to see a free river card. And the seven of spades on the river, giving Hagen a full house. Now he's undeterred about potential straights and potential flushes as the full house. It would be a massive cooler if a player had pocket tens. He has the pocket nines kind of blocked or the 10-7 for a better hand. Obviously, sevens for quads is not possible from Hagen's mindset because he has that block. It's not just a blocker, but it's impossible for it to happen. Hagen now looking to try to get value after it went check check on the turn. After being uncertain about Hagen's play the previous hand, although it worked out quite well for him, I'm fully on board with how he's played this hand. And just because I didn't agree with the last hand doesn't mean that I was right. Hagen has all the table dynamics in his head. And everybody's all tied up with different styles. And Bjorkheim falls with his two pair, only to get the bad news. And Hagen wins back to back sizable pots near the conclusion of level 12. We probably have two to five hands more to play. It's hard to tell as we are on 30 minute delay how much time that would be. We're tucked away, away from the action. We do not want to see any spoilers. It could impact about how we are commentating the hands if we know <laughs> what's gonna happen. Like who wins what, it's better for everything to be a surprise for us as well. But Hagen has 
chip up super nice in the last two hands. Interesting spot here. I'd back opening with the big suck, Bjorkheim calling, and it's even more interesting. Bjorkheim with the eights, Nertov with the nines. Now Nertov has been playing very tight, but in this particular spot with a raise and a call, I'd love a squeeze jam for 85,000. Indeed, he is jamming for the 85,000. I expect at least Eidbach to come along, but let's first see what the players in the blinds have. We could be seeing our first all-in at call at this particular feature table. We likely will after Bredwin holds his King Jack. That would have been fine to call a single race to, but not a 17 big blind shove with other players involved too. Now, I don't think Eidbach is thinking about folding at all. I think he's thinking about whether he wants to jam over the top or call. He does have Bjorkheim to worry about too, but Bjorkheim didn't rebet. Does jam over the top. That should get Bjorkheim out of the way. It looks so strong. I mean, there's obviously the ace king that we see, but typically you'd be doing this with nines, tens, jacks, maybe even with the premium ones, queens, kings, and aces as well. You likely wouldn't be doing this with sixes and fives. It is possible, but uh, less likely than the rest of the range. Does indeed fold. And the flip is on with Nerfort at risk. Nertov is in the lead in the coin flip. But that can all change. Oh no, eight of diamonds, seven of diamonds, six of diamonds. That pocket of eights would have improved to a set. But lucky for him, the ten of clubs on the turn gives Nertov the straight and the check mark. I'm yeah. Nobody with any diamonds. There were four diamonds on the board. Nertov doubles through Eidbach with his nines. Holding, improving to a straight against Ace King and Eidbach otherwise breaking the board. So the patient Nertov now has a starting stack. Jeg har sagt at hver gang jeg er nede på dette gulvet her, så graviteres man litt automatisk mot ett bord. Uh, nå tror jeg det egentlig er tyngdekraften som jobber, fordi antallet sjetonger som befinner sig på det bordet her nå er ganske vilt. Altså, kan du starte med dig, Kajan? Du har også spilt opp litt siden sist vi var her. Jeg har fått veldig mange gode hender nå. Det svinger bra nå. Så er jeg veldig fornøyd. Og likevel så er du langt fra Big Stack på dette bordet. Ja, han fikk en sinnssyk pott og han quads mot topphus. Så det var jo helt sykt. Kanskje går vi til å høre litt om den potten der. Han spiller pott akkurat nå, så vi kan starte først hos Mr. Sperren her, tidligere Norgesmester. Du har også jobbet deg litt godt opp siste tiden. Yes, jeg har fått jobbet litt. Vi har noen all-ins og hatt litt flaks. Det er bra, deilig. Litt flaks, er det sånn flaks som kreves for å vinne NM-flaks, eller er det bare at du fikk beste hånda til å stå? Nei, det var litt flaks. Jeg var underdog, men klart å vinne. Nå ser jeg også at uh, Chip lider på bordet, han kan hente inn en pott, og da tillater jeg meg å spør- stille noen spørsmål også. Det, er, det, er, det, er, det, er, det begynner å bli bra nivå for en dag to, den chipstacken der. Det ser bra ut, forhåpentlig, ja. Jeg er fornøyd. Og det, det ryktes som en helt enorm pott til dere også. Kan du igjen fortelle hva det var som skjedde? Ja, han som satt til høyre for meg, han uh, fikk pocket damer, jeg hadde pocket ti. Han reiste opp, og jeg kålet, og så kom floppen ti, ti dame. Så den spilte seg selv. Du har fortsatt igjen uh, ja, 7 og 70 og en halv her, ser jeg. Er det, hvordan, hvordan er det å reise seg etter en sånn flopp? Det var ikke jeg som hadde den nå. <laughs> det var han som satt der tidligere. Stemmer. Da, da, da er det jo i hvert fall uh, lite håp for den stakkaren som da har floppet uh, denne ville varianten. Altså, tenk dere, sitter der med damparet ditt, kommer drømmer opp en dame 10-10, og så møter du fjærs i 10. Det er de tingene som egentlig bare skjer et par ganger i løpet av de fleste spokekarriere. Det. Men uh, akkurat her, så kom den i uh, NM på main event. Og da er det greit å sitte på riktig side. Veldig behagelig. <laughs> Tilbake til dere, Stig og Kjetil.
Thank you once again to the Redwings betting some of the goings on at the side table. But meanwhile, we're in an interesting hand here. I'm assuming Hagen opened with the 10s, and based on the pot size, Nerf likely called and Bradwin came in with the 8s from the small blind. He's betting this 9 high flop, but I don't think this will work here with Hagen having the overpair. Hagen happy to call. Really afraid of the tour, that's yeah, yeah. why he had to raise, uh, 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 perhaps he had other things in his uh, mind. Uh, the five of spades from the turn shouldn't really change much. Let's see if Brandland continues the aggression, seeing only one overcard to his eights or slows down after Hagen called to his early position opener. Does have the nines, tens, jacks, kings, queens, and aces in his hand. Also has the ace, kings, but Bradwin does check. Now Hagen is for value. Bet forty thousand. Into a pot of ninety-four thousand, and we could see Hagen winning a decent pot here, depending on what happens next. I don't see Bramley blowing up a stack with a jam, but he will be calling. Jacking up a pot to 174,000. And the five of hearts on the river double pairing the board. Now this would potentially be like a full house range from big blind, but not from the small blind as much. Not many fives and fours in his hand. Maybe like an ace five suited. But Hagen should feel confident. He does check it back. It did slow down the action. The pot was big enough for him. And it's up to 316,000 after his 10 for good against eights all the way through. It's going to be a color up break with the 500 chips. Players, we have to come back five minutes early from your break. That will be back to the original table field. Not quite yet. Please come back five minutes early from your break. But they will be coloring up some of the chips from the break. I'm not sure whether we're going to see this table or another one. Although it has been entertaining, especially with 2022 WSOP tournament champ Essek Wynjarsad at the table. There are plenty of other tables of interest as well, so we'll see what the crew decides to do. But meanwhile, while we have your set at the table, we don't know if we're going to continue having him. We'll likely be getting involved with this seven, so we'll see at least one more pot from him. Does Min raise it? Let's see what your crime decides to do. We could set mine with the sixes. We could try to three bet, repping something else. And it looks like potentially a three bet here. Indeed it is. Trying to disguise the fact that he's getting in with the sixes. And also getting other players out of the way at the same time. That would potentially call a min raise, but won't be calling a three bet to five and a half big blinds. Ace three suited, as does Bramlin with his 10 three suited. Wake has an easy fold. Eidbach, who would maybe defend his big line with a 9 five suited, is not going to do so now. And let's see what your set opts to do facing that three bet, playing that hand out of position with the seven. Does opt the call. And there's already 66,500 in the pot. Neither player can be too thrilled with a five of spades, ten of spades, jack or club flop, with two cards over both their pairs. However, that's very going to often happen with sevens and sixes. Both players check. And the jack of hearts pair the board on the turn. Make it less likely that either player has a jack or a very sharp check, although Espen is checking most of the time on the flop after calling a three bet out of position. But his checking again. Alright, so I'm going to be able to get out of the 
Jorstad here on the turn. Of course, it's possible he will raise or fold. Does fold. So Bjorkheim stealing one away from the 2022 WSOP main event champ. Well done. And we are now on break. When we come back, the binds will be 3,000, 6,000 with the big bind, anti of 6,000. Stay tuned here at the Norwegian Championship. This is Jason Glatzer, and see you soon.